From under the Golden Dome in Charleston, this is the West Virginia Capitol Report. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Capitol Report. I'm Bill Laird, and we have a great show lined up for you today. Uh, uh, we're, we're coming to you from the site of the 30th Annual String Band Festival held here at Camp Washington Carver in beautiful Clifftop, Fayette County, West Virginia. And we're joined by two special guests, a uh, good friend of mine, Randall Reed Smith, the Honorable Commissioner of the Division of Culture and History, and uh, Commissioner, welcome to the Capitol Report Show. Thank you, Senator. It's nice to see you again. You bet. And we have a great guest here, a gentleman by the name of Bobby Taylor, who uh, I guess has as deep and rich a history as far as the the annual event here at Clifftop. And uh, Bobby, really glad to have you to join us and provide a little bit of history on this event. And uh, again, thanks for joining us. It's an honor to be here. Okay, well, again, uh, the 30th annual, that, uh, uh, that's a pretty good indication this has been going on a while. And uh, uh, Bobby, uh, from what I understand, you've uh, perhaps attended each and every uh, string band festival since uh, its inception uh, 30 years ago. And uh, if you could, maybe for our viewers, just tell us a little bit about the, the genesis and uh, how this got rolling and uh, what, uh, how it's matured uh, over the years. Uh, the Appalachian String Band Music Festival uh, started in 1990. Two or three of us got together. The commissioner at that time was Bill Drennan and Will Carter presented him with an idea to have the Appalachian String Band Music Festival for old time musicians. Previously, we had had the Appalachian Open Championships, which was a different type of contest. Uh, back to, more to the roots is the Appalachian String Band Festival. So uh, I've always been, for culture and history, kind of the contest organize, organizer. And i had done the Vandalia since 1979 for the first contest there. So we, we started out to try to get this a success right off the ground by hiring some of the best known people in old time music to be judges and to perform. It started out with just a few hundred people. The next year it pretty well doubled. And then by the, like the fourth or fifth year it had gotten up to quite a pretty good sizable number, maybe 1,800. And now what you see is some of the years uh, our banner years as far as attendance and I know that uh, that Commissioner Randall Reed Smith knows more about which were the banner years. Well at any given time we can have 4,000 to 5,000 people up here on the hill wow. and we have all 50 states and last year we had 14 countries to come and join us. Wow. That's, uh, That's hard to beat. And yeah. Bobby Taylor is very modest and he will not tell you this but I will. West Virginia is the home of old time music, no matter what they say in North Carolina. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no argument uh, here, that's for sure. Uh, and again, uh, I guess the, the event has always been held here at uh, uh, Camp uh, Washington Carver. And uh, uh, Commissioner, I, you know, the, the work that's been done here, I, I just, uh, uh, I think folks that uh, truly appreciate uh, iconic uh, structures and architecture, uh, you know, this uh, chestnut log uh, structure mm -hmm. here, and uh, uh, I just can't say enough about the Division of Culture and History and the commitment that you all made to some basic, uh, some basic renovations and improvements to this facility that uh, really needed to be done, they were done, and uh, uh, if well, you could. Senator, as you know, this is a very historic site. Camp Washington Carver is the first African-American 4-H camp in the world, and it is the largest structure 
of native chestnut in North America. And we just try to keep it up. We had to put a new fire suppression system in that we could have camps here again. Uh, we put new shingles on. We've had to update the well system and we just keep, keep at it. You know, it, uh, and again, uh, those of us uh, who've been coming over here for years just uh, really appreciate uh, uh, this facility and love to see it used for good solid purposes such as the, uh, the string band. Festival. Well, you and Delegate Perry have said it best to me. This is our culture center in Fayette County. It, uh, and we try to have all kinds of events here. No doubt about it. A lot of credit is due to Randall Reed Smith because he has basically kept all of this camp building and moving forward. And he has also supported a lot of events. And uh, your energy and ability to <laughs> multitask and keep everything going. I remember one slogan that he said that I always lived by. I, we were looking at something, and I can't remember if it's the lockers in the Great Hall or whatever, but I said, well, they're okay, but uh, maybe this or that, and you said, well, it's better than it was. <laughs> I like that. I well, I always say I have a good staff. They do all the work, so. <laughs> well, again, uh, you know, fairs and festivals in West Virginia, and again, this is the 30th annual uh, string band festival. Again, I know the, uh, the Vandalia celebration uh, that's already occurred, uh, was that the 40... 42nd. 42nd annual Vandalia festival, so these have, these are part of, uh, you know, our traditions here. And uh, uh, if you could, Commissioner, maybe just briefly talk about the importance of fairs and festivals for, you know, our communities uh, throughout the state of West Virginia. And certainly every, every community, every town, every county uh, seems to have their, their own uh, brand of fairs and festivals. But it's pretty important in the preservation of our, our traditions here in uh, the Mountain State. Well, Senator, as you know from your time in the legislature, uh, fairs and festivals funding is a pass-through through, through uh, the Department of Arts, Culture, and History. There's some type of fair and festival in every county, and the way we see it, it goes along with our mission to identify, preserve, promote, present, all things West Virginia. And you can start from Hancock County, down to Mercer County, from Wayne County, over to Jefferson County and there's something in every county every year. We have anywhere from about 440 to 450 festivals wow. throughout the state and it's huge to promote our heritage, our traditions like you said, but most of all our tourism. Absolutely. Because you know we are a natural resource state. Coal, timber, oil and gas, but you know our mm -hmm. greatest resource for our people. You have that exactly right. Up here at Clifftop, you will see people, as, uh, as the commissioner just said, from all over the world that comes in to Are you going to be on television with us? I hope not. Uh, you are. I feel like I'm in the hole right now. Yes. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, people come from all over the world to this event and uh, we would like to think that the welcome mat is out there to all these people that come. Always. That, that provide tourism in West Virginia. They buy from our stores. They basically take some of our culture back to their homelands. So I think that's why this is, is successful, is it is a homecoming in the hills for old time musicians, their friends and family. And that's what you see here. No doubt about it. Well, let me, uh, let me ask you this, Bobby, uh, again, for the benefit of our viewers. Uh, this is a multi-day uh, event. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could maybe just kind of get into a little bit about the schedule. I, I guess there's various types of, of competitions and various instruments and that type of thing. Uh, maybe just for our viewers that have not had the opportunity to attend the Appalachian String Band Festival. Just give them a little sense and flavor of what, uh, what that schedule looks like. Okay, uh, we start out officially uh, Wednesday evening with the square dance, which is a very big success. And then all through the festival, the wonderful staff here has made this very welcoming for children, kids events, all kinds of arts 
and crafts and some even demonstrations. We have uh, vendors here that have instruments. And kicking off Thursday morning, we have the banjo contest, one of the biggest old time banjo contest probably in the world. Mm -hmm. The fiddlers in other places, I'm so sorry that they do not have the fiddlers that we do at some national and upper uh, events across the country. They're seeing a great falling off in their attendance of fiddlers. We have 90s to 100 and it's like how do we fit them all in. Then we have the wonderful neo-traditional band contest that allows all these different young people's creative ideas to come into the music. And then we go traditional again on Saturday with the traditional band contest, which uh, some of the winners, it has kicked their career off. They have wonderful bookings. If you win Cleft Top, that means something. I mean, that is good on your resume. And then we have the dance contest, and the finals in the evening are just unbelievable. I mean... Bobby, I think we need to talk about the best thing about string band is that its traditions pass down from one musician mm -hmm. to the other, and the only way it can be passed down is to be told and taught. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily on paper. Mm -hmm. And to see the next generation learn from the seasoned veterans. That is, you need to talk about that because it all happens right here. It does, because I've watched from the first cliff top with little kids, little babies mm. in strollers in 1990. Now I'm seeing them on stage, winning contests, creating uh, their career, you know, from their winnings here. And like I was mentioning with the neo-traditional, it also allows the younger generation to expand to that area. But there's no way to pass on the, tr the tradition the way we learned it than interaction between the older generation like, like you just stated. Uh, you cannot pass on all the feeling and the soul like being there. So you need to be here if you love this tradition. Wow, that is so well said. And, uh, and Commissioner, I, you know, there are sort of classical trained uh, musicians. That, well, uh, you're looking at one of and, them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I think the, the thing that's fascinating about uh, our traditions in terms of Appalachian uh, music is, uh, uh, you know, some of the stuff there's no cheap music for. No, there I isn't. <laughs> and uh, you know that uh, that then goes to uh, the, I guess the whole rich, robust area of our oral traditions, and you know, sitting on Grandpa's front porch. Uh, Storytelling. That's, Stories. Uh, it all goes together. As you know, I was a classical singer. I sang 20 years. I was 14 years in Europe, and I had that training. Right. And it was at times challenging to find the soul of music like Bobby was talking mm -hmm. about that came from within you. And here what you see is people sharing each other's passion, mm -hmm. their love of the music, what something might mean to them when mm -hmm. they play, and it's passed from one person to the next, to the next generation, to the next generation. And there's so much soul in this music, wouldn't you say, Bobby? Yeah, the one thing I would say is when you pass it from one generation to the other, I once described it like this old archaic fiddler. He played so eerie and so haunted. It was almost like you could see the panthers and mountain lions and wolves in the woods. They brought that aura in. And even, I tell you, what the commissioner was talking about too, is classical definitely has its place. Any way you can learn the music to get it in your head is good. And I know that in your career, by networking with other great singers, you've picked up stuff of feeling and soul oh, absolutely. to add to what you do. There is no right or wrong way to do it. You can pass it on any way you can get it, but it's what you do with it. Bobby, I think we would be very remiss if we didn't talk about our most popular fiddler who they've named an award for at the Grand Masters down in Tennessee, your dear friend, Senator Robert C. Byrd. Absolutely. Senator Byrd was a 
very close personal friend of mine, uh, we shared fiddling. And I could call his office <laughs> in D.C. And get, and get one of the people answering the phone. He'd find out I was on the phone and we'd talk fiddling for a while. <laughs> so they created the Perry F. Harris Award at the Grand Masters in Nashville, Tennessee, this big international top contest as far as competition goes. And that award is given now every year the, uh, the, the, I mean, the Division of, Col how we say it, Arts? It's Arts, Culture, and History. All arts, Culture, and History. I knew I'd get that back. It's the Culture Center. It's the Culture Center. <laughs> we help make that possible in Nashville with the Robert C. Byrd Award that goes to the winner of the traditional category, the type of music you hear oh, here at String right. Band. Wow. And yeah. Robert C. Byrd was, a lot of people did not know this, because in his earlier life, he wasn't just a good fiddler, he was real good. Really good. I mean, he had his times, he was really good. And I always loved the fact, he got the Perry F. Harris Award for one reason. All throughout his life, he said his fiddle case was his briefcase. So he took fiddle music That's to the world. So for his lifetime contribution to fiddling in America, he got the Perry F. Harris Award. And when I called his office to say, I said, Cinder Bird, are you coming? And, he, and that was right in the middle of some of the crises in D.C. in 2008. And, and he said, if you play me Redbird on the stage, which is a nice old fiddle tune, <laughs> I will come and get my award. So, as a matter of fact, he did come, and I, I was just like I was telling Ed Carnes, I said, be careful what you pray for, you've now got it. Now you've got to deal with all the particulars in having somebody of that nature wow. here. What a great story, what a great story. Gentlemen, we're going to have to take a quick break and then we're going to come right back and pick up our discussion. And again, we're coming to you from the Appalachian String Band Festival here at Camp Washington Carver in Clifftop. So we're going to take a break and be right back. So stay with us, everybody. The West Virginia Capital Report is brought to you by the AFL-CIO of West Virginia, Cucumber & Company, online at cucumberandcompany.com, and Mark Hunt & Associates, toll free at 800-554-1280. From under the Golden Dome in Charleston, this is the West Virginia Capitol Report. Welcome back to the Capitol Report as we continue our broadcast of the 30th Annual Appalachian String Band Festival here at Camp Washington Carver in beautiful Clifftop, West Virginia. And uh, uh, Commissioner, we, our friend uh, Bobby Taylor behind us here, uh, looks like he brought his instrument well, with Well, Senator, him. we have a treat for you. Okay. We're going to get to hear a true national treasure. Okay. Fiddle on the fiddle. Fiddle on the fiddle. Okay, hit it, Bobby. Thank you. 
So, Sinter, I think it's now time for you to have a fiddle lesson. You know, I tell you, <laughs> you, you can't sit there and not tap your foot I to know. that. That's just uh, wonderful, and uh, Bobby, appreciate that uh, little rendition there. And uh, again, uh, you know, the, the culture in West Virginia, a lot of Scotch-Irish uh, uh, traditions and things, and that's, uh, that's something that a, a lick or two on a fiddle always just kind of wants to take me back to Ulster, Ireland, where my roots are. And, uh, uh, but again, uh, what, a, what a wonderful venue here at uh, Camp Washington Carver. And uh, uh, Bobby, I, I, if you want to rejoin us here, uh, okay. I don't want to, uh, what a beautiful instrument that is. Uh, now, Bobby, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. here, but old time music got its start right here in the Appalachian Hills of what became West Virginia. It and was, this is indigenous to the country, what we do with old time music. What, when, when the people first settled this area, they come from Ireland in all different areas over there in Europe. And this area, Scotch-Irish, they brought it from their homeland. And uh, there's traditions in the backwoods of West Virginia that has been kept so pure that that, I think, is one of the major draws to West Virginia, is how pure the music has been kept as it has been handed down from one generation to the next. Wow. So that, I think, puts West Virginia, and I'm sure many other areas, on the map for, you know, preserving the heritage. So, Bobby, we got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. Just name some of the names of the great masters from West Virginia. The great masters from West Virginia, um, you have Clark Kessinger. Oh, yes. Ed Haley. They're both in the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame. And um, we have French Carpenter. We have Wilson Douglas. We have uh, Mose Kaufman. We have uh, French Mitchell, Woody Simmons, Glenn Smith, Melvin Wine. Oh, Melvin. NEA winner and uh, countless other legends. But unfortunately, those great folks have done gone on. And uh, those of us that are left, we always wondered about the old guys. I hate to admit it, now I'm one of the... Oh. <laughs> that happens, it happens. Oh, guys. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, I'm going to move this slightly. Okay. The sun's okay. going to get it. Okay. Let me okay. ask uh, this, Bobby. The, again, I imagine there are a number of people in attendance at the festival that sort of mark this on their calendar and they come back year after year after year. Uh, but again, uh, you know, each year I think if something's going to continue to grow, new folks come. Is that is my sense of that right? A lot of folks uh, are annual uh, visitors here to the festival. They are annual visitors. And the thing is, the reason a lot of festivals have kind of died is because the information highway and so many things to do. But guess what? Cliff Top is still on everybody's vacation list. Yeah. And therefore, the great setting here, Camp Washington Carver, in one of the most beautiful spots in the world, it brings people from busy lives. It gives them a chance to basically relax and play music that was played hundreds of years ago. Why do people mark their calendars? Somebody asked me why Clifftop was so successful. I said it's the setting and the wonderful people who have made it that way. Uh, we're very thankful to Randall Reed Smith for always putting 110% into the camp and the hospitality that we give to people who come. Uh, I cannot believe the amount of dedication it takes to keep 
a camp like this going. And uh, the fact that uh, you have done it all these years, you've made it better. So therefore, why do people come? It's because of people like you, like me, and all the audience that chooses to make it their home for a week and a half. Bobby, thank you, but I gotta be honest with you, it's the staff. They do it, they do the work, they love this place. I know. And we have a great collaboration and partnership with our public servants that have always been there to support mm -hmm. us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So to anybody out there listening and haven't come to Clifftop, you need to come and join us next year. Absolutely. You, you definitely, definitely need to come and join us here because uh, when you're looking for something for your children, to get them diverted into something that is pure, timeless, and just good. Uh, Bobby Taylor, really want to thank you for offering your insights. It's kind of, kind of like the George Washington of the uh, String Band <laughs> Festival. I mean, you've uh, you've been here since the beginning, and sharing those insights uh, really give folks a sense of the tradition and uh, the importance to our Appalachian culture uh, in events such as this. And and Randall Reed Smith, uh, my friend, uh, I just can't thank you enough for your continued support for education, the arts, uh, all the good things in West Virginia that make, uh, make it why we want to remain here in the Mountain State. Uh, this is home to a lot of people, good people. So again, to our viewers, we'd like to thank you all for tuning us in each week for the West Virginia Capitol Report. So thanks for tuning us in. Have a good week and goodbye, everybody.